I'm Bear Grylls, and I'm going to show you what it takes to get out alive from some of the most dangerous places on the lands between. I've got to make it through a series of challenges in the sort of places you wouldn't last a day without the right survival skill. Now, I'm in Volcano Manor. It's a lethal environment with mile upon mile of lava. This stuff will burn any tarnished alive in, well, hours. It's a place where the snakes walk, the villagers throw firebombs, and the steep drop kills hundreds of tarnished. I'm going to have to dig deep to show you how to survive in my toughest challenge yet. Here we are, at the Chapel of Anticipation, where all tarnished souls begin their journey. To make it to Volcano Manor, without lighting any graces, I've chosen the class with the highest vigor, the Knight. That thing doesn't seem too happy. After an unfortunate encounter with a grafted scion, I find myself with a valuable bottle. I need to pee and I don't want to waste that, so what I'm going to do is use this bottle. Careful not to light any graces, we set off towards Volcano Manor. Hang on, something's not right. I've managed to escape the Chapel of Anticipation, but have soon discovered a problem. So, it turns out the developers patched the softlock I was going to use. When you open this door to Limgrave, the stranded graveyard Grace lights up automatically. Not ideal for our challenge, but we'll find another way. It's time for a risky move. I'm going to leave my urine behind and attempt a glitch called zipping. To escape without lighting a grace, I need to point my camera west, raise my shield an inch forward like this. The block animation overlaps with the walking animation, creating an incredible burst of speed. There we go, no grace is unlocked. Time to move on. With the glitch successfully executed, we can now reach the Academy of Raya Lucaria by carefully descending and using portals. We'll need to stay quiet as we sneak past this massive slumbering dragon. Well, that didn't work at all. After obtaining the key, we can finally access the Academy. If you're ever in a tight spot with enemies, just quit out of the game. It'll reset their positions, giving you a chance to escape. In the depths of the Academy, we find the Abductor Virgin, a terrifying metal construct built to transport victims to Volcano Manor. Imagine having one shot at life and being called an Abductor Virgin. This is going to hurt, but it's our fastest route to Volcano Manor. Despite the pain, I've made it to my destination, Volcano Manor. Now this is where the fun begins. I have been eaten alive by an abductor virgin and now trapped in the fiery depths of Volcano Manor. The first thing I notice out here is just how scorching hot it is. Everything is just filled with this eye-soaring lava and this stuff will burn any tarnished alive in, well, hours. With no way out and only the most basic survival tools, our goal is clear. First, let's test how stuck we are by using our memory of grace. If we're lucky, it'll lead us somewhere that isn't here. Since we're definitely stuck, our priority is finding shelter. A grace where we can heal and respawn after death. Once we find a grace, we'll have a safe haven to return to instead of respawning in a pool of lava. Our search for a grace leads us to the subterranean inquisition chamber, but it soon becomes clear that we've hit another roadblock. We've got a problem. We drop down from up there to light this grace, which means we're trapped in this area. Our only hope for escape is defeating the formidable abductor virgin duo. Hopefully this shouldn't be too hard. It's clear we need to find another way if we want to escape the treacherous volcano manor.
Let's rewind a bit to when we first arrived at Volcano Manor. Instead of venturing into the caves, we take an alternate route through the scorching lava. We'll need to tread carefully here. The lava may not be as deadly as expected, but it's still not a pleasant walk. We continue upstairs, trying hard not to anger the snakes, and keep heading up until we reach the Great Bridge. The path through the lava opens up to more parts of Volcano Manor, but our exit is blocked again by one-way doors. We could really use a grace around this place. Escaping the lava is draining most of my health even before I do anything. Look over there. I bet I can jump over the railings. Yeah, this will make the perfect place to set up camp. We've got a safe spot now, but we're still not out of the woods. We only have a small portion of Volcano Manor accessible to us. The rest is locked behind the area boss, the Godskin Noble. It's a thick one. We might be able to get some blubber out of that one. Didn't think that would work, but my god, that was awful. Tonight on Bear Grylls, I get trapped in Volcano Manor. Hammond gets kidnapped by virgins in Hogwarts. And James tries parkour for the first time. Wait, what the fuck? Precise jumps and quit outs, we've managed to parkour over to the other side. This area is normally used as a shortcut after killing the godskin. Wait, what's going on here? We might be able to use this area to cheese the godskin. We can't cheese the Godskin Noble, and the shortcut elevator is inoperable. So our next plan is to use more parkour. First thing you do is jump around until you hit a tiny nook. After that, jump forward one more time, and carefully inch forward, like this. Now comes the hard part. We need to jump to the right, and then climb up quickly to get over the ledge. So what you do once you get up here is... Press menu and hold the run button, and jump. Closing the menu using the run button will store the action, allowing you to immediately start running. After numerous attempts and mastering the art of jump storing, we finally succeed in skipping the Godskin Noble. We've managed to skip the Godskin Noble boss, but it's too early to celebrate, as dying will mean we'll have to do it all over again. Let's take down the shortcut elevator just in case. A wise choice as we soon discover that the door to the entrance of Volcano Manor is blocked. Now what I should have done is pick the stone sword key starting gift. But thankfully there are other ways of getting them. So let's take the other way for now. We venture into Rikard's lair and pick up a unique weapon called the Serpent Hunter. This weapon might come in handy later. Let's head back and get those keys. The first stone sword key is located deep within the prison town. A lot of work for a single keep. Let's go back up. Using the previously lowered elevator shortcut, we bypass the most challenging part of the jump. The second key is during the ride up. Now that we've gathered the two stone saw keys, we can unlock this door and make our way to the main lobby. It has been a long and arduous journey, but we have finally reached the start of Volcano Manor. Our escape is close at hand. Just goes to show whether you're in the wild or in the lands between, being adaptable and resourceful is what gets you through the toughest challenges. But our hopes are dashed when we discover that the door to Altus Plateau is locked. There's always one more obstacle, isn't there? I am Tanith, the proprietress of this house. 
an honor to have you. Despite our new allegiance, the way out remains locked. With no other choice, we decide to make the best of our situation in Volcano Manor. If we're going to be stuck here, we might as well get comfortable and explore our surroundings. We go upstairs from the lobby and encounter a surprise visitor. Humans are an excellent source of protein, so I'll have to rely on my shield and halberd to take her down. The trick here is a simple hit and run. After several attempts, we manage to defeat Inquisitor Giza, and she drops her weapon called Giza's Wheel. That thing was too big to be called a pizza cutter. Too big, too thick, too heavy, and too rough. It was more like a large hunk of iron. I can't actually use this thing properly, but I have an idea. Developers have tried to patch this glitch numerous times, but it seems to have slipped through the cracks in the current patch, 1.09. Only have the Serpent Hunter and Geezer's Wheel in your inventory. Block, backstep, QL2 during the backstep, and swap Geezer's Wheel to the Serpent Hunter. And by combining these common household items, we can craft a devastating weapon. great escape, we head down to the subterranean inquisition chamber. After a long and arduous journey, we finally see a ray of sunlight at the end of the cave. We have reached the Altus Plateau. We have escaped Volcano Manor and reached the breathtaking Altus Plateau. It's a place filled with the blessed light of the Erd Tree. However, our goal, Limgrave, is still far away, located south of the Altus Plateau, past Leonia of the Lakes. There are three paths connecting Altus Plateau to Leonia of the Lakes, and none of them are particularly helpful. The first and most obvious path is the Grand Lift of Dectus. Well... It's not really helpful without the medallion pieces. Let's try the other ones. The abductor virgin we've used is a one-way trip, which leaves us with the ruin-strewn precipice. Now that is a long way down. Better call up the elevator. Well, this is useless. With all three paths blocked, our choice is clear. Keep moving forward. Which is much easier said than done. Thankfully, the pizza cutter is more than capable of cutting down the draconic tree sentinel. Now that's settled. Time for the capital. But to my dismay, the way into the capital is blocked. Even if we have the two great runes, the gold fog gate won't disappear unless we talk to Melina. With all options exhausted, we are now truly stuck in Altus Plateau. We have activated the elevator by jumping down and slamming our body into the pressure plate. We reach the fog gate leading to the boss magma worm maker. Let's pop out the good old pizza cutter. Fog gates in the lands between are only accessible from one direction. This just goes to show how good Dark Souls 2 was. Furthermore, the boss will not activate unless we cross the fog gate.
but we cannot give up just yet. Let's see if we can work some magic and bend the rules of physics in our favour. Our last resort, consulting the map of wrong warps. This entire area has a default position in Altus Plateau, but the ruin-strewn precipice is an exception. We can now perform a fast travel and force quit the game before the loading screen disappears. If we're too slow, we'll just end up doing the fast travel. If we are too fast, we'll end up at the exact same spot that we started. Wait, what? A successful wrong warp will cause our existence in this universe to disappear, resetting our position to the closest default location. In this case, the start of the ruin-strewn precipice. Despite our best efforts, we land back on Altus Plateau instead of the start of the ruin-strewn precipice. If we look here, we're standing in Altus Plateau. And if we go down, it should read ruin-strewn precipice. But it doesn't. Quitting out will send us back to the top of the elevator. This is because the area after the boss is considered as an unstable ground and does not count as being in the ruin-strewn precipice. So unless this thing reads ruin-strewn precipice, we can't wrong warp out of here. The developers have forgotten to mark a small area. A minor mistake that we can take advantage of. Limgrave is just ahead. We're so close. As we walk toward Limgrave, we come across a bridge connecting the two areas. To my dismay, the bridge is broken, leaving no way to reach Limgrave. It's hard to believe that such a small gap can keep us from our destination. Our journey continues as we search for a way across the broken bridge, knowing that Limgrave, our final destination, is just out of reach for now. But we've come so far, we can't give up now. Lyonia of the Lakes, a vast area filled with sorcery, crabs, and especially portals. The first portal leads to crumbling Farah Mazula. Interesting. But even if I kill Malekith, it'll lead straight to the Ashen Capital. The second takes us to the Chapel of Anticipation, the tutorial area we began in. Well, this is completely useless. The third portal transports us to Nokron, the Eternal City. It is a beautiful area, but I don't think it helps us unless... Nokron is situated underneath Limgrave and Kaelid, connected by a two-way elevator. Problem is, this particular area is a small portion of Nokron that doesn't lead anywhere. Our only hope is to break time and space using wrong warp and see if it leads to stable ground. We seem to have spawned on the top layer of Nokron, which is a bit concerning. Going in naked prevents the Mimic Tear from using any of your equipment. Not that it matters. Since we have this chainsaw in our hands, we have come so close, but the question remains. Is the top layer of Nokron connected to the bottom portion? There is only one way to find out. Our health is getting real low. Wish I had some kind of bottle to put my piss in. With a stroke of luck, I've died right next to a stake of Marika, restoring my health and landing me on the lower half of Nokron. Only one step remains. The elevator that connects Yoffa River to Limgrave. We've made it, against all odds. We've escaped the treacherous depths of Volcano Manor and conquered the challenges that lay before us. With nothing but our wits, skills, and a little chainsaw ingenuity, we've proven that even the most dire situations can be overcome. 
It's a testament to the power of tarnished perseverance and creativity. Remember, in the lands between, adaptability and resourcefulness are the very essence of survival. Whether faced with towering bosses, impossible odds or labyrinthine landscapes, never forget the spirit of exploration and the will to push through adversity. For when the path seems darkest and all hope appears to be lost, it is then that our inner strength and determination shine brightest. Embrace challenges, keep pushing forward, and no obstacle will be too great to overcome. Greetings, traveller from beyond the fog. Toilet.